below. Tack Blades here, or Gary. Um, I haven't done a video for a little while. Uh, a few reasons for that. A, I've been a little bit ill, just colds and things over Christmas. We had all the Christmas to, to get through, which is a busy time for the family. And um, I've been busy making stuff, uh, so I'm out of time to do videos or get out. So I've made a tent. It's all done now, and I'll show that in another video. It's a pyramid style tent, um, about 2.8 meters square, and weighs 630 grams. So it's a really ultra lightweight backpacking tent, fully four season stormproof uh, tent for bivy camping, camping, wild camping, whatever you want to do. But today's video is all about my recording gear. I've got to a stage now where I'm happy with it all, I've uh, looked at it all, reviewed it all and um, I'm really at a state now where I'm, I'm going to keep this for a long time. So I just thought I'd share with you some of the stuff that I use, uh, what I found to be good and bad and stuff that I've had to make to, to make it what I want it to be. So I'll bring you in closer um, as I go through just to show you it all um, in detail but this is the kind of stuff that I take when I'm away camping including tripod sometimes. So I've got two sets of kit really. I've got a heavy kit but it's more capable and a very lightweight kit which is um, good for bivy camping and, and backpacking. So if I go through the heavy kit first it's mostly all of this. So first of all I have a, a tripod. Um, a lightweight tripod doesn't really work because the whole purpose is it to lower the centre of gravity and keep the, the camera still. Um, so you need the weight there. So the best compromise I got is a Silk Sprint Mini uh, GM and these are excellent, all the Silk tripods are excellent but these are really excellent tripods, nice and small, nice and compact. Um, I put a um, Manfrotto head on it, just, uh, just uh, a tilt one, you don't need anything else for the kind of stuff I do out there and it's got the nice quick release head which I use uh, on the camera, which I'll explain a little bit more about later. Sorry for the audio and video, but I'm using an old camera so I can show you the new stuff. Um, so that's me um, tripod, uh, very stable, it goes to about a metre and a half high. Uh, it's got spikes or soft uh, ground uh, bottom bits and you can adjust the, the centre pole and everything else you need. Very nicely designed, very robust. I've had it about 10 years, no wear and tear on it to, to speak of. Um, brilliant bit of kit. So I like that a lot, I use that a lot. But this is too heavy when you go and bivy camping, but I just thought I'd show you what it is and I'll show you a bit of detail later. Next thing I use probably the most is my selfie pole or monopod pole, whatever you want to call it. These are, this is a cheap eBay one, and it's okay, but it's not brilliant. So, <clears throat> it extends really long, which is good. Um, to be honest, I only use it about half the distance, about half a metre to a metre um, when I'm using it. It's very lightweight, which I do like. Um, the problem is with these, they're telescopic, um, which is handy, but there's nothing to stop the whole thing twisting. Yeah, it's just a friction fit on the telescopic joint, so it twists, which is a pain in the neck. The actual joints are quite stiff, but where it joins at the end, which I might glue it here, I don't know, it's a bit loose. So, um, yeah, it's not brilliant. What you really want is a selfie pole with these kind of quick lock things on, and then it would stop it twisting and, and moving when it's extended. You can buy them, but they're really expensive, and I haven't gone down that route yet also quite heavy, um, so I'm not sure whether I'm going to go down that route yet. Um, I'll go through the mount system in a minute because it's a bit unique. Um, I use a Gorilla Pod a little bit. Um, this is a cheap one, eBay one. It's okay. Uh, you can wrap it around trees and poles and things like that. Um, very lightweight, which is nice, um, but not very stable. Uh, when you get it down, there's a lot of give and play and moving around a lot. Um, and it's quite a hassle to get it in the exact position that you want for the camera. Um, it's got a ball joint on the top. 
So I don't really like it that much, don't use it a lot, but it is handy if you've got a branch you want to stick your camera on, you can wrap it around there. Um, another great um, tripod is this one, it's, it's a hammer, really cheap, and it's just like two legs, that fold up like that, really small and flat. Now the reason I like this is because, uh, how should I do it? Well, here's the camera. You put your camera on there and then you can use it like a pistol grip mount on the back of your hand. It gives it a really stable platform um, or selfie. You can use it as a selfie because it's a really nice handle on it. Very quickly deploy it as a little tripod. It's exceptionally stable. There's no give or play in it. You can adjust the angle of the head. Um, I just really like it and I use this one an awful lot. It's really, really good. Obviously it's low down to the ground, um, but for a lot of stuff um, it, it's perfect. So I really like the Hammer little tripod. I use it for the camera, which I'll show you in a minute, but I also use it for the audio um, device. When I just want to stick the audio device in camp somewhere near me, I can be recording the audio um, without having to worry about mics and things like that. So yeah, really good Hammer little tripod. That's my favourite one. Another cheap one is this one. Uh, this has got telescopic legs, so it does go a bit higher than the hammer. Quite stable. It's got a knurled nut on here, so you can adjust the angle of the legs. So when you want it really stable, you can just have them splayed out. It's really low centre of gravity, really like that. Um, it's got a nice little ball head on it, um, which you don't get on a lot. So this is a Jessup's one, um, but you can get rebranded ones all over the place. Um, and it's just really nice, quite lightweight again. If you want to have your camera and your audio on two separate little mini pods, this is perfect for that. So I use that quite a lot. Um, not as light as the hammer, not as stable as the hammer, um, but quite versatile with the um, ball head. Quite good. So if you want, if I want to um, mount the camera and the audio device on one tripod, I use this, uh, it's quite cheap, it's only about £5, pound. there's a metal plate, rubber foot and two um, knurled nuts, I'll put all the links on the video below, um, and these are basically, it's for a camera and a flash gun, but you can use it for anything, so I mount the camera on one of these, mount the audio on the, on the other, and that all mounts on a tripod, um, which is perfect really. Um, so if you want one tripod with both things on, this is the way to go. Very cheap and easy, I'll show you a bit detail later. Um, something a bit different that I made was um, this. It looks a bit ganky, uh, a bit rough, um, but that's because it's got a lot of waterproofing and glue and stuff, so it's totally waterproof. This is a vibration microphone. It picks up the acoustic vibrations um, in the real world, you can. It's very, very sensitive. It's a piezoelectric cell, um, and then I've made a blister in the cable in there with a couple of diodes and things to stop it producing too big a spike um, going into the recording device because it can get quite big from the piezos, um, so it just suppresses that a little bit. And these are so sensitive, you can put it in the soil. And you can pick up all the ants' footsteps and the sound of the ants moving around. You can put it in a tree in the crack of a bark, and you can hear all the tree creaking and groaning. So I haven't been out and used it in anger yet, but I plan to do that. Um, obviously, I'll record it so you can hear all the sounds, um, and you get a bit of a soundscape of the land around you that n most people just wouldn't know existed. Um, but there's a hell of a lot going along on the acoustic side, so I'm going to have a play with that as a homemade one. Um, <clears throat> now, cases, or oh, we'll do the audio first. So this is my audio device, it's a Zoom H2N. It is amazing, um, reasonable cost, amazing sound quality, lots of microphones inside for doing different types of recording. Uh, you can have an external mic for a lavalier mic, which I normally wear, um, or you can just plonk it down and let it record. Absolutely top quality stuff. I love this. I use this with the the action cam, and you get perfect sound and, and really good video. 
Um, on a windy day, obviously the microphones are a pain in the neck on a windy day, so I just made a small um, dead cat. Um, <laughs> this is actually a hat from a charity shop. You know, you get the old lady uh, super furry hats that they wear. So I bought one of those for 50p, cut it all up, got the fur out and made um, a little dead cat for it. Um, so you put that on. I've tested it acoustically, it's, it's transparent and it, it just removes all the wind noise, all the popping sound if you're talking close to it. Um, and it just uh, is just perfect. You can buy them, um, but I like to make stuff, so I made one. And this is, this works amazing, so that was 50p. Very useful. And I've got loads left over if I want to make a lavalier dead cat as well. Um, just to hold it all, um, I made a little bag, um, just a little canvas bag, uh, camo in Velcro, and it stores the dead cat in there. Um, you can get the audio device in there, and then it's got a belt, a strong, really strong belt strap. It's really strong canvas, cotton drill, um, and then I used um, beeswax and rubbed beeswax all over it, and then got a hair dryer, and you melt the beeswax into the fabric. The fabric absorbs all the melted beeswax, and it stays in the fabric. Um, and that makes it waterproof. So I uh, don't have to worry about it getting wet or anything like that now. So it's totally uh, totally waterproof and uh, you can reproof it if you want to really easy with a bit more beeswax. So um, the reason I use beeswax and not candle wax is beeswax has a much higher melting point. Um, so it's a little bit more rugged and uh, it stays on a lot longer. So pure beeswax is, is the way to go if you want to do that kind of stuff. Um, for the little action cam, when it's on the um, selfie pod, I made a little bag for that. Um, again, it's got a little pocket in, so this will go in with it attached to the pod as well, and that will hang on your belt um, securely, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can have the audio and the video on your belt, just take it off when you need it, and you don't have to scrabble around in your bag. Again, that's beeswaxed and melted on there, so it's waterproof as well. So. Yeah, nice little bags, keep it in. Find stuff on your belt a lot easier uh, than trying to find it in the bag, so I like that. I chose the Sony AS20. Um, it's a phenomenal camera, Carl Zeiss lens, really good lens on it, f2.8. Um, it's got its own Exmor sensor, um, and that means they're backlit, the Sony sensors are backlit. Um, which means the low light performance is incredible. Um, it's tiny, good for mounting on the side of the head because it's nice and slim. Um, better quality and low light than a GoPro in my opinion, all the GoPros. Um, does 1080p 60 frames a second, does uh, 720p 60 frames, 30 frames, 120 frames. And as you go down the, the frame rates go up so you do super, super, super slow-mo. Um, and it's just a phenomenal piece of kit. It's very cheap. It's about £150 in Argos. Um, you cannot go wrong with this camera. Now, the thing where GoPro shines and this doesn't so much is the accessories. So if you're into all your bike mounts and paragliding mounts and all that kind of stuff, go for a GoPro. If you want something that's better quality, especially in low light, um, but less um, accessories then, then this is really a better choice for me anyway you can choose what you want there are loads of great cameras out there but for me this is the perfect one you have to make your own mind up um, what I like about it is also when you've got your mobile phone there's a Wi-Fi in here and Wi-Fi on your phone and you can remotely see what you're looking at and also remote control record stop change all the settings so that means when you're out on your selfie you can look on your phone or you're in shot uh, quite easily and carry on filming really like that the other thing the battery life is crazy good i shot um i went to do uh, i do taekwondo and i filmed a taekwondo british championships the other day with this and um, a professional camera setup and the event was 10, 
about five hours, five, six hours, and it used one and a half batteries, and that was on all the time. So <laughs> you can't complain at that battery uh, consumption. It's just phenomenally good. I just, when I'm out camping, I just turn this on, record stuff, don't even have to think about the battery, it'll just go on all day, and I'm, I'm not really worried about it. So yeah, great stuff. I've got three or four batteries, but I don't really need them, because it's so good. So, great camera. Now, mounting it, bit of an issue, because there's no, like the GoPro, GoPro's got a mount hole built into it, I think, but this one's got nothing on there, and it's a lozenge shape, so you put it down, and falls over. <laughs> so there's no way to put this down and just let it fill. So you need to put it in something to mount it. At the bottom is all the like external headphones and connectors and stuff. All right, it should be on the back, I think, really, because when it's at the bottom and mounted, you can't get at them, so that's a bit of a pain. Um, the microphone and audio on it capability is phenomenal, really good audio, so you want to use it. You can use the waterproof case that it comes in. Very nice little case, um, completely waterproof. Use it in all weathers, underwater, whatever you want. Um, obviously, there's a membrane over the microphones to keep it watertight, so it does uh, reduce the sound quality quite a lot. So, if you want good sound, then this is no good in a waterproof case, as you'd expect. It's like any action cam. Another thing that's not obvious and it's a problem with all action cams that have a sealed waterproof case you get condensation inside especially over the lens which ruins your film because uh, this heats up, the air is moist inside then it hits the uh, case and condensates real pain in the neck and I didn't really appreciate it until I started playing with this that this is a major problem you can use silica gel sacks, these are food industry ones, perfect size reduces it a bit but doesn't solve it you can fill the cavity with air from your car with the air conditioning switched on because the air is very dry, helps dry out the air in here which does reduce it quite a lot but then when you want to open it or do anything with it then uh, you, you lose all the dry air in there so that's not really an answer either. So waterproof, put it in its case. If you want to use the audio on here which is very good so you kind of do want to use it in good weather like today, um, you need something else. So you can buy cases from Sony, a little bit expensive, a bit plasticky, not amazing, um, and a bit expensive. So in good uh, traditional do it DIY style, which I like to do, I made my own. So this was my first attempt. This is a normal um, mobile phone holder that you put your phone in, pointing that way, horizontal, uh, without all this. And it's just the size of your phone. And underneath it's got a tripod mount hole, uh, so you just put your phone in. So I thought, if I get some other stuff in there, you could mount this in there. So I got some of this L-shaped PVC duct tin you get for um, in your hardware store. Um, it's just an L-shape, and you just cut it up, smooth it off, use a Dremel to, to make the shapes you want and glue it together with um, PVC weld, it actually melts the plastic together, it's like really really strong, really solid. Did several layers, built it up, and then here, because it's slipping a bit, I put some of that non-stick mat and just glued that on as well with PVC weld. And you end up with something that, that's not too bad actually, it works. Um, I used this in a, um, a big filming event recently that I was doing, and it, it worked a treat to be honest. It grips it well, um, doesn't slide in and out because of the um, non-stick foam. It supports it. It's got a little hole for the speaker, so you can hear what's going on, or the microphone uh, for the speaker, yes, yeah, so you can hear it. Access all the uh, things and mount it, and you get all the nice uh, sound coming in. Bit creaky, so you've got to be careful with that if you're using the audio, but there's a very quick couple of pounds for the materials and glue, uh, you can make a little mount for it. and it's, it, There's no condensation then, obviously, because the heat just escapes and it, it's perfect. So I really like that, but I thought I could do better. So I wanted to, I wanted to make the world's best DIY... Uh, world's best DIY holder. I know it's quite a claim, so uh, I 
which I'll show you what I've done, and then you can decide whether you think it's the world's best DIY one. I haven't found any better online. I've found them similar, but not better. So, this was the first step, but using this stuff, this L-shaped channeling, um, and Dremel and, and smoothing and stuff, worked really well. So I thought you could take that stage further and make something a bit more interesting. I'll show you a close-up bit later. So this again is using the L shape, uh, cutting slots out, smoothing it with the Dremel. I've lined it with a fabric so it doesn't scratch. Um, glued it all together with a PVC weld. Um, at the bottom, I've just got a one of those plastic, what are they call them, corner joints you put in um, like kitchen cabinets to join two sides together in the corner. It's got two holes that way, one hole that way. The hole that way, I glued that to that. The hole that way, I drilled it out to um, uh, 13 sixty-fourths, oh, old school I know, 13 sixty-fourths hole, and that was just enough to use the thread from a tripod adapter to cut a, a thread through the plastic. So it's actually got a thread cut in there that I can screw in and out and fix very securely. So that's the tripod mount. And then the, the unit fits in there pretty snug. It's got a stop at the back. You can access all the um, buttons. On the side you can access all the buttons. See the screen. Got a hole for the speaker. And it's pretty snug fit, it doesn't really fall out, it's a little bit of a friction fit, but very loose. So, I drilled a little pilot hole through the front, just got a bit of copper wire, you know, just mains copper wire, and a little leash out of nano paracord, and all you do is put that through the hole, and um, just bend it. And you've got a little gate, so even if it shocks really hard, it can never come out now. Um, so there's a really simple way to, to keep it in, keep it nice and secure. There's no creaking, no moving about, very quiet. Um, lets, lets the heat out pretty well. Uh, also protects it from a little bit of rain from the top. Uh, you'll notice there's like a chamfer at the front. That's because the, it's a 170 degree angle lens, very, very wide. So anything protruding this point would have obscured the lens or give a vignette on the, the image. So I have to measure that really carefully, and that profile gives a, a way that it, it will never interfere with the, 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 the light going into the lens. So, I think it's the world's best, but you may not. Um, but it is, uh, it's very light, very strong, um, doesn't move around, doesn't make a noise, and it gives me everything I want. So, um, for me, it's the best. Uh, you have to make your own mind up. But if you're ever thinking of manufacturing or... Um, making stuff out of PVC. The PVC with PVC weld is great stuff. It's really strong, really quick to do, um, and you can make pretty much anything, any case, any plastic case. So, uh, yeah, there you go. I'll show you a bit closer later. So that's the case uh, all sorted out. Um, now, the mount system. I was fed up with screwing on and off um, all of the different mounts for all the different tripods. I wanted a quick release system uh, for the action cam. Now the problem is most of the quick release systems on tripods are massive, they're huge and it's just overkill for this, too heavy. So I wanted something light and small but strong enough to do the job. So what I found online was these things. See there? And what it is, it's a quick release shoe for a flash gun. So the flash sits in there. So this is all metal, aluminium machine. It's got two little springs in, and it's got a clamp that you clamp down to squeeze the gap. And a, a tripod hole in the base, so great. So I've got that, and then you can buy these as well, that come with it, which are little um, plates that are actually the size of a flash gun, so it will fit in a flash shoe. This is a flash shoe, so you could just use it with a flash shoe on and off. Give you kind of a quick release, but not very secure. Um, but with this one, you just slide it in, and do it up. And it's really strong and secure. So, these are like a couple of pounds. They're really, really cheap. 
So I've got loads of bases, so I've got one on the selfie, I've got one on the little tripod, I've got one on the gorilla pod, um, and I've got a mount on this one. And then separately you can buy as many of these as you want, the adapters, um, to fit on your devices. So I've got about five of these, so I've got one for the camera I'm filming on now, I've got one for my action cam uh, on this one, I've got one for this one, um, I've got a couple for my audio, so I can put it in the bottom of there and put that on a tripod. There might be one on there now. Yeah. So you can see, just screws in, does up with a locking nut and is totally secure. So now I can very quickly change everything around. So on this tripod you could be having the um, the audio. And then the camera on another tripod. Yeah. You can use a coin, I find it's easiest. You can just use a, a penny just to slot in there and do up really tight and then it's totally secure. And then you have a little um, quick release system on everything and everything can go on everything else. So you can move this to any other tripod or the selfie stick. You can move the action cam to any tripod or selfie stick just with quick release and you don't have to worry about unscrewing and screwing everything up uh, on the base of the, the units. So this has worked really well. I changed it around a bit. Normally you would have it like that so 90 degrees with the nut on the side but I thought if you're holding it on a selfie stick you're normally at these angles, you're not on these angles so on this angle if the slot was going this way if it did come loose it would just slide forward and drop out but if you put it at sort of a tangent to the, the way you're using it um, which is not supposed to use like that but it works fine um, then even if it works loose it's not going to fall out because it has to fall that way and that way so that's just a little tip if you're going to use it. Put them um, 90 degrees to the, the plane that you're, you're angling it at, and that applies to everything. So <clears throat> you can see on here, I've got one on the bottom of here. You put your camera in. Put your little, I've got a little pin. Put that through. Bend it down. So that's secure now. And then say you want to put it on this one. Put it in there, do it up, there you go, yeah. now you've got it on the tripod, all secure, all safe, very quick, you can hold it in your hand, um, do a selfie with it, lash it onto a branch if you want, um, but yeah I really like it, it works really well. The Steadicam on there is excellent, so you don't really need gimbals and stuff like that, the Steadicam is good enough. Um, so you can handheld a lot of stuff and get nice slow and uh, steady moving footage, so really good. So all in all, I think that's about it. I'll bring you in for a closer look in a minute. Um, but this quick release system using the flash gun mounts uh, from China works a treat, they are absolutely spot on. So that's how I do all my filming now. Um, so I just thought I'd show you guys, and that's how I get all the good quality audio and video and things like that. Um, oh, one other thing when I'm using my Zoom H2N, sometimes I have this in its case on my belt, and I run a lavalier mic um, up to to on my jacket or whatever I'm wearing at the time and that gives really good clear audio of your voice um, but it also picks up some background sound so you get some ambience of um, where you are and get a feel of you know forest noises and water and things like that it's got a little foam uh, uh, hoodie on it um, and it's a very cheap easy mic to buy it's only about £16 I think maybe less um, excellent quality and so much better than just having it around you or getting all the noise. Sometimes when you have your camera picking up the audio, you get all the squeaks and cracks from the thing that you're holding, um, which is a pain in the neck, and this just eliminates all of that. So, yeah, another good uh, good tip there. So, that's it. I'll bring you in so you can have a closer look at stuff, and then uh, I think that's about it. So, 
We've got the Sony AS20. Very neat, very small. It's got everything on there you, you want. You can't You've got a lock on it to accidentally turn it on, so that's very good. That's the waterproof case it comes in. Very nice case, I must admit. But the audio's new good and the uh, it mists up and fogs. This is the best in the world DIY case that I come up with. It's got reinforcement on the side, lined with fabric, stop it scratching, access to all of the things. And you can see it's just uh, layers of this L shape um, PVC glued together with the PVC weld. It's got a little stop internally, stop it going back too far. That's another angle going out this way. And then all you do is get your Dremel and you grind it all super flat so it's all nicely finished. Um, get nice hedges and things like that. Everything rounded off. And then obviously that's the mount at the bottom. That's just glued on. It's those uh, connectors I was talking about. And the hole drilled with a thread cut using the black um, mount to cut the thread and then a little nano paracord lanyard to stop losing the pin and I got a spare pin it's only the copper wire out of mains cable so um, you can make those pretty easy I got a spare one in the bag in case you uh, in case I lose that one but it should be all right that's a little hole it goes through so yeah really like that um, this was the original one very cheap and easy to make anyone can make this um, with a bit of glue and a bit of plastic and it works pretty well it's a bit noisy a bit crackly but um, does work pretty well so anybody can do that this is the hammer tripod really nicely compact lightweight packs up strong doesn't make a noise doesn't move around it's just ideal and you can see here the, um, the flash mount uh, thing that I've been using let's see if I can do it on here that's too bright. See, a couple of springs and it just slots in there and then grips it as you do it up. And then the mount, the mount you put on all your devices is just a little, it's actually, it looks square but it's rectangle so you have to get it the right way around with a locking nut and it just screws in and secures firmly on there. This is the H2N, Zoom H2N for recording audio. So what you do is you record your audio separately uh, to your video and then in the software afterwards I use um, Premiere Pro or After Effects you can just align, synchronize the audio with the video very easily looking at the waveforms so that's a way to get perfect audio um, synced with your video a very nice piece of kit this, I love it um, along with, I'm using quite a lot recently the lavalier mic so this is just the little with its windshield popper shield on it very good lavalier mic good quality good range of frequencies um, I'll put all the links below so you can have a look the one I bought this is a uh, condenser mic I think but it needs to be powered uh, so you can't just plug this into anything you've got to plug it into something that has um, line power um, so this Zoom H2N has an option to um, turn on powered mics so it will pump out a bit of power to the mic to power them which is a really nice feature so yeah but the quality is just phenomenal selfie stick this is the cheapest of the cheap you'll find on eBay um, monopod and then I stuck one of these connectors on the end which is just ideal you can adjust the angle but it's not that great so I am looking for a better monopod but I haven't found one yet at the right weight with the right quality to, to buy even at any price so I'm still looking for that um, this is the uh, Gorillapod clone uh, it's okay I don't use it that much quite creaky quite awkward to get the right angle but useful for wrapping around branches again with a little mount on top this is the um, vibration microphone that I made obviously it's got hot glue um, those gold things are feet from hardware store feet that you put under furniture to let them glide uh, glide feet just bits of plastic really 
um, but they were the perfect size for the piezo crystal I put inside um, and then sealed it all with hot glue which um, conducts the vibrations very well through the plastic to the piezo and there's a blister inside with some it's actually LEDs in there because they've got a, a turn on voltage so it will suppress any spikes coming from the, the piezo to stop damaging your equipment so I've done that, I'll put a link below on um, some instructions of how to make these if you're interested so you can pick up all you know ants footsteps and <laughs> creaking trees and whatever sound you want when you're out so I just thought a small light I'll have a play with it see what it's all about Quite interesting this is the bar to mount two things on one uh, tripod mount so you can have your audio and your video or you can have your video and a flash gun or a light or a torch if you want to but a torch on you as well as your camera, you can do it with that. So yeah, it's just nice and adjustable, um, easy way to mount stuff. Uh, this is the uh, Jessup's tripod, telescopic legs, ball head, quite nice little ball head, I quite like that, that one. I put a little flash gun uh, shoe on there, just to see if it worked with those other mounts, and it does fine. So if you didn't want to, to get the other things, you can use any flash gun mounts you've got, um, which is quite handy, quite nice. These are the, the bags that are made, uh, French seams on the edge, all enclosed, double layers, so you won't see any edges anywhere, uh, Velcro on the top and middle, and then coated in this um, beeswax and then melted with a hairdryer. You can see the shine on it slightly. Um, makes it smell really nice, um, but is also totally waterproof, including the stitching. So that's a new way I'm going with all my stitching now that's outside. Really good. Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, and the uh, silk tripod that I use when I want to go heavyweight and have some stability. If I'm setting up camp for a little while, I use this just to um, to hold the camera nice and steady. It's got a nice Manfrotto head on it. They use them on monopods a bit, these heads, but it works well with this, with the proper uh, hot shoe, uh, proper quick release plate mechanism. But yeah, fairly light, not super light. Um, a lot lighter than a bigger proper tripod. I've got, um, see there, there's a carbon fiber Manfrotto, and it's lighter than that, so um, that's a full size one. Um, so yeah, really good for camping, really small, packs down super small, so it's good for in your backpack, stick it in a side pocket, no problem, and away you go. So that's all of the stuff uh, for the camera, I actually use a little um, case that they hold uh, Nintendo DS's in from the kids, they didn't want it anymore, so I nicked it, so I can hold all my cloths and all my lavalier mic camera, and then all the spare memory cards and readers and stuff. I use 32 gig SD cards, high speed. It only needs class 4 in that video camera, which is not that expensive. It doesn't need the class 10, so that's quite handy. Um, so I've got a couple of those which will last me a few days. Spare pin for my uh, camera mount. Um, yeah, and that's about it really. So, let's put you back. Thanks for watching. Uh, the plan is to get out soon. Um, now, I plan to do a bivy camp just in a bivy bag and a tarp and a sleeping bag and a few bits and pieces. So, I'm going to do that quite soon because it's nice and easy. You can just go anywhere and do it. And then I've got my homemade tent, which I'm keen to, uh, to do a vi video on. Need good weather like this need to plan it a bit, needs a lot of thought um, and a lot of details need to be reviewed so um, I need to plan that a little bit before I can do that but that's on the cards to do and then obviously I'll be camping out in that as well um, debating on whether to do an inner nest for it I'm going to do a bathtub floor um, but whether I do the full mosquito net in a nest I don't know I've got the mosquito net in, super lightweight one but. Um, don't know yet, it's a lot of work, so we'll see. But I just want to get some experience. I can sleep in it in a bivy bag if I need to, not a problem. So, that's the plans for the future. 
that's all my recording stuff. Hopefully there's something there that might interest you or make you go and look a bit further. All the links are down below and uh, see you again. But it won't be long and you'll see me in a bivvy bag hopefully on top of a hill somewhere. Or maybe near the sea on a cliff top. We don't know yet. We shall see. Okay, thanks a lot. Cheers.